As some of you may not know, Dolphin's user files are no longer inside the Documents folder. I've already made a short video explaining how these files are now inside the Windows Roaming folder. It's a bit annoying, but what if I told you that all these important files can be kept inside Dolphin itself if you switch over to portable mode? The process of doing so is really simple. Simply create a simple text file called portable.txt. As soon as you do so, it activates portable mode. And as soon as you run Dolphin, the user files will be transferred inside the emulator's main folder. Please bear in mind that your settings will revert to default, so you will have to reconfigure the emulator. Believe it or not, Dolphin does actually have basic system or BIOS files. The developers of Dolphin created a substitute BIOS, but there are a handful of GameCube games that require the original that came with the console. Otherwise, they have minor graphical issues with some typefaces. Most notably, these include Hitman 2 and Star Fox Assault. You can rip the BIOS straight from your console, but I suspect most of you will want to download the files from the internet. Either way, once you have it, go into the user folder and then into the GameCube folder. My BIOS file is the USA version, so I'll paste it into the appropriate folder here. It's almost a given that games won't always run perfectly out of the box. You can see here with Mario Kart Double Dash that EFB copies need to be disabled in the emulator's graphics settings, otherwise the lens flare doesn't render properly. Normally settings are changed right here in the menu, and that's fine. However, this will affect your entire library, so if you forget that you disabled EFB copies, this will cause issues with games that actually require the feature. What many of you may not know is that you can implement graphical settings for individual games, which makes things much more convenient. You can do this by simply right-clicking a game's profile and selecting its properties. From there, you can enable or disable features under the General tab. For example, a few rare games are incompatible with Dual Core mode. If that's the case, you can disable the feature right here without it affecting other games. And if you click on the Editor tab, this will allow you to create a custom config file for the game. Several options will be available to you, like enabling or disabling EFB copies and XFB copies. This will basically cover all the features you need to have per game settings. As you know, all GameCube games use the same standardized controls, but that's not true for the Wii. Some games emulate the nunchuck, some emulate the Wiimote, and to make things worse, you sometimes have to hold the peripherals sideways. This can make things complicated, especially when you have to create settings and then save them as individual profiles. So I've already created a profile that utilizes the keyboard and mouse. I simply named it Standard Keyboard, as you can see here. I'm going to copy the text and then head back to the game's properties. Go to the editor once again, and add the following lines of text into the user config box. Now just paste the text you copied earlier, and you're done. From now on, Scarface should use this profile by default. And there it is. Dolphin's notification has confirmed that it will be using this controller profile from now on and this can be applied to any Wii game. I have already made a widescreen guide for Dolphin. Link below for those who are interested. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found my video useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Have a nice day, and goodbye.